Hey, what's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here, and I'm bringing you one vlog update on this custom AMD build that I'm doing for a friend, and then it will actually be done. So the next time you guys see it after today's video, it's gonna be completely done, and it's kind of fun. It's almost like going back to my roots, considering I haven't done a custom water-cooled AMD build since before I started my channel. And if you guys were watchers of my channel years ago, you guys would know that, you know, everything I did was based on my AMD system back then. So this is kind of fun. And I figure right now we'll just kind of take a tour. We'll talk about some of the parts, why we chose the parts, and then uh, we'll, we'll get the system done. And then we'll do like a complete review of the system. <laughs> Dude. What? It's so small. You really think so? What does the wife think? Well, she says it gets the job done. <laughs> Mine's not that small. Mm -mm. The Fractal Design Node 202. It's not about how big it is, but all about how you use it. Well, here she is right here. If you guys can't tell, this is obviously sitting in a Case Labs case. It's not the SMA8, but it is the SM8. I've always wanted to build in one of these cases, and this is the first time I got an opportunity to do it. Uh, I, you know, it's got a feature that I didn't expect and I didn't even realize. Uh, it is completely symmetrical, I guess would be the word. What's on the top is exactly what's on the bottom. So you can flip this case over and you can make it an inverted case by simply swapping the bottom and the top pieces, which is only a four screws. So you can see, or it's more than four, but it's only a few screws. But you can see how the grommets and everything are exactly the same. It, it's pretty neat. So it's not one of those cases you have to order necessarily and say, I want it to be a left window, you know, inverted or a right window inverted or whatever. You just do it yourself and you just put, instead of putting the feet on the bottom, you put them on the top and you can see you've got two places to mount the power supply unit. So that's a really neat feature. I didn't even know that when I got the case. All right, so obviously this is an AMD build. We are sitting here in an ASRock 970 Performance uh, motherboard. Some people might frown upon this motherboard because it's not the greatest overclocking board on the planet. That's okay because we're not going for the biggest overclock on the planet. We're going to be going for a pretty, I'd say a modest 4.3 or 4.4 gigahertz 24-7 on this. Uh, but I like the color scheme and considering this computer is for a female and she really likes Red Mist. In fact, she's a friend of the owner of Red Mist. So she kind of wanted the same color scheme going. So it was the perfect board for red that didn't break the bank. Because yeah, we could have gone with a crosshair formula motherboard, but those things are still over $200 and they just would have had a ton of features she wouldn't use on there. So for the block on here, we do have the new, uh, what is this, the EK Supremacy Evo. And it does have, I do have in there the optional insert as well as the flow plate. So it is optimized for AMD and I converted it over to your know, AMD bracket. And then we've got the Primo Chill White revolver fittings, which is gonna be going you know, with my PETG tubing. You can see I've got it going right there up the wall. And so it's gonna be all PETG tubed. Now for the reservoir and pump, you guys know I kinda of like to do reservoir pump combos. It keeps things tidy, there's less tubing needed. And in this case right here, uh, you can see that I actually have it, you know, mounted up off the ground. It's kind of floating there. And we've got a 250 millimeter bits, bits power reservoir. So it is connected right there. If you can see, it's just got a standard fitting in there. That's a, basically a G quarter thread on both sides. And then it's just threaded together. And then on the top, it's got one of those multi-res type fittings. So I can plug up the holes I don't need. I can use one of the holes for filling when it's time to fill. That's gonna be going over to the radiator. And then that on the back is just a, a, a separate fitting. Now, when you use a top uh, return like this, you have to use a push down tube. I, I've seen people before try and use returns that were not push down tubes and just a waterfall effect. One, that makes it noisy. Two, it introduces a bubbling and air that can get back into the system. And it's just, it's not very tidy. So as long as you keep the fluid level above the return line, then you're good. It'll always return down into the fluid and then the air will make its way to the top. For radiator, I am using an EK 
Uh, this is one of the XT, I believe it's an XT rad. It's one of the big rads, uh, 45 millimeters thick, only has one set of inlets and outlets right here on the left. Uh, it's a lot, it's very similar to the Alpha Cool radiators, only it has one set of, in, uh, you know, fittings on there. It's not all the way around like the Alpha Cool are. They don't actually make this radiator anymore. And this has been sitting in my closet since I did Red Mist because he gave me this radiator as well as some, uh, we ordered some Alpha Cool stuff and he ended up using the Alpha Cool and said, well, hang on to this radiator in case we ever need it. Well, here's a time when we need it now. So we're going with a 480 mil by 45 mil, which is gonna be more than enough to cool the CPU and the GPU. It is a GTX 980. It's not an AMD graphics card, which made a lot of people kind of sad when I tweeted that out or showed Instagram pictures of it being a 980 because they kind of felt like, well, it's an AMD build. It should have an AMD GPU. Well, there's a couple reasons why we're not using an AMD GPU. One, I already have three of these things laying around. So it's already water blocked up. The 980 is a very powerful GPU and it's still powerful in the 300 series. And it, you know, it was very affordable. I could, you know, let this go pretty cheap. Two, the only other AMD GPU I have in here with a water block as I reach for it here is, I'll put this right here, uh, is my CryoVenom R9 290, which is sitting right here. Now, there's nothing wrong with the 290. It's just this card versus that card in terms of performance. Whereas this one looks really nice, it just wouldn't be giving us the performance numbers that we're looking for, especially when the 980 was sitting right here and was an option. So that's why we went with the 980 on that. The pump over here is kind of a hodgepodge, really. It was a Alpha Cool uh, D5 top, which I had unused. And so I got the EK D5 and I put those two together. I still have to sleeve the cables, as you can see. That's one thing I still have to do. And then the power supply unit, this is the Bits Power or Bits Phoenix uh, 650 power supply unit. It's the same one I loaned to Paul that he used in his uh, blue build. So it was actually already slated for this build. So this is the power supply here. The reason why I chose this one is it already has all the pre-sleeved cables. As you can see, all the cables are pre-sleeved in kind of the paracord material. And so I thought it looked really, really good. Oh, and then I forgot to mention the memory. This is the um, XPG V1 from A-Data. I chose it again, obviously, because it's red and I think it looks really, really good. Now, one of the things I did different with this build is normally I'll do all the tubing and stuff and then I'll wire it up at the end. But as you can see, I went ahead and did all of the wiring on this first. So with the exception of the fan cables and the pump right here, pretty much this system is entirely wired up and the pump is gonna actually route behind the pump and, and through this hole. I'm not gonna drill any more holes in here. I had to drill two holes to mount this, that's it. And I don't wanna drill any more holes. So it's gonna route through here. And so let's go ahead and take a look at the back so you guys can see just how neat and tidy this is. I know a lot of people ask me to do, uh, you know, a video about how to do cable management. I honestly don't know how I would do that video because I kind of feel like no matter how I do it, it would almost be condescending because it, cable routing is kind of common sense. You just have to look at it and say, oh, this path makes sense. And then you put it there and then you zip tie it down and you try and find the route that utilizes the length of the cables most efficiently and, and plan it out and do it. So I don't know. I really don't know how to do that video. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm just overthinking the video. I don't know, but it's a highly requested video and we'll see about doing it. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the back. All right, so here's the back. It's not the tidiest of jobs, but it certainly gets the job done. Uh, you can see here how I kind of pushed back some of the extra length for like the USB cable and, and routed it in there. Some of it's behind the SSD. Uh, there's a SATA cable going that way, but you can see because of the length of the cables, actually that thing came unplugged. Because of the length of the cable, sometimes you have to get a little creative on the way that you route them. Uh, you know, I can see, you can see I have some spares, like the, the two, the plus two pins for the PCI Express power, they're down there since the 980 only uses two six pins. And then there is the power cord for the CPU. Now, the only other thing I still have to do in here, as I mentioned, is the pump and the fans. But as you can see, everything is pretty tidy. Um, there's lots of, you know, plenty of room here for making sure that the panel can close and stuff. Uh, the drives, as you can see here, this is a Plextor M6, uh, M6S. 256 gig SSD. 
And then up here we have a Toshiba two terabyte uh, hard drive, 7200 RPM, 64 meg cache. And uh, you know, I've been very happy with the performance of these drives, so I had no problems using these products here inside this build. It's gonna perform very, very well for her. And then you can see we do have room here for more, two more hard drives, another hard drive up here if we need to, and another SSD in here if we wanna expand the storage. Now you can also see here the screws where I mounted the reservoir. It's gonna be, you know, very, very, actually it's right there. It's very important to make sure that you guys, before you drill into anything, that you kind of plan out where things are gonna go because I knew that I had these drive cages on the back of the case here that I had to be mindful of. So basically I kept, I looked at it and said, well, where's the most logical place to put these screws? And I went, ah, well, next to the pass-through holes, there's nothing there. So I might as well just drill next to that and that's what I did. I mean, you've got you know, that cable right there, but that's not a problem. So definitely want to plan ahead before you start drilling in anything. Because if I had just willy-nilly drilled, I could have drilled right into the SSD mounting plate, which would technically have not been terrible, but I didn't want to do that, obviously. So you can see right here on the top of the case, it has these fan cutouts here, so that not only is it for a radiator, uh, but it's also for top mounted, mounted, top mounted fans if you were just doing air cooling. The only problem with this is these do introduce some airflow restriction when it comes to getting air through the radiator, but it's pretty minimal, especially if you use static pressure fans. But you might have noticed there's no radiator fans on here yet, and I'll go ahead and tell you why. So there's no radiator fans on here yet because I haven't decided which fans I'm gonna use. Uh, in the front here, I already have some Bits Phoenix uh, white LED fans, but I don't think they match the build very well. I've actually reached out to Josh at uh, Fractal Designs to see if he's interested in sending over some of the Venturi fans. I'm very impressed with the Venturi fan. I know you guys saw that video recently. Uh, so I, I would like to put four static pressure fans up here and three airflow fans right here. Now you might notice two things here on the rear. One, it looks like there's a big giant hole where the power supply would go behind the radiator. Uh, the block off plate, I just haven't reinstalled it yet because I want to have easy access to getting to those fittings. And as you can see, by leaving that off, I have a pretty easy access to getting to those fittings to tighten up you know, the PETG tubing when, uh, when I'm ready. So I can get into it from behind, I can get into it from the side. I just have all access. With that there, it would be very, it's not comfortable getting to the rear fitting here, especially when the fans are installed because they're gonna add 25 millimeters of thickness. So this is always, uh, this was a nice option. When I saw that, I was like, oh crap, I'm taking that out and we're leaving that out until we're done. You might also notice uh, I used the block off plate back here for the rear fan. The reason for that is we're not gonna put a rear exhaust fan on this thing. Now, those that are astute, will already know why I'm doing that. But those who are here watching this video to learn, uh, I'm gonna tell you right now why. You can see up here, we have a power supply unit that is drawing in air from the main compartment of the case, mostly because there is no hole down here. There, there's no hole through the floor to pull in air through the bottom and exhaust it out, so it kind of has its own airflow path. So it has to take air from the inside of the case. So this is an exhaust. We're gonna have four fans up here in the top. Even though we're gonna have resistance going through the radiator, uh, there's still four fans with high static pressure moving air through the radiator. And we only have three intake. Now, yeah, I can balance the airflow by slowing down the radiator fans and speeding up the intake fans so that these three fans are making up the airflow, uh, more airflow than the rear or the top exhaust for the radiator and give myself positive airflow. But because I have one, two, three, four, five 120 millimeters worth of exhausting and only three 120 millimeters worth of intake, I would have to slow down the radiator fans quite a bit, uh, more than I want to, in order to keep positive pressure in this case. And we want positive pressure so we don't pull dust in through all the other vents and things. So I'm gonna be looking at getting airflow fans. Like I said, I want the Venturis if I can get my hands on them in the front here. So I have nice airflow with a quiet and lower RPM and then I can run like 50 or 60% speed on the radiator and keep positive pressure. And I put in the back block off plate in the back just to try and help keep positive pressure where I can, even though you know we have these vents up here and this vent back here, it shouldn't be too hard. We're actually gonna force the airflow to go like this. You know, It's gonna come in the front and it's gonna go up. That's the idea. So anyway, that's where we are so far in the AMD build. 
And next time we see it, uh, this thing will be done and running. And of course, it's going to have red fluid because, you know, Project Red Mist and all. Anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get the heck on out of here. Uh, thanks for watching. Next time you see it, it will be completely built. And when this system is done, then I can get started on my LAN rig, the, the white and green LAN rig I talked about doing. And I still haven't decided which GPU I'm going to put in that. I might put one of the 980s. I also have water blocks and stuff for either a Titan or a 980 Ti. I might put one of those in there. I just haven't exactly decided yet. Sometimes having choice and actually having the freedom of choice makes things a lot more complicated. I liked when I just had to buy whatever I could afford because that was so much easier to figure out. Yeah, first world problems I know. All right, guys, I'm gonna get on out of here. Thanks for watching. Couldn't do these videos without you guys. And I will see you in the next video.